All right, welcome door grow hackers to the door grow show. If you are a property management entrepreneur that wants to add doors, make a difference, increase revenue, help others impact lives, and you are interested in growing your business and life, and you're open to doing things a bit differently, then you are a door grow hacker. Door grow hackers love the opportunities, daily variety, unique challenges, and freedom that property management brings. Many in real estate think you're crazy for doing it. You think they're crazy for not because you realize that property management is the ultimate high trust gateway to real estate deals, relationships, and residual income. At Door Grow, we are on a mission to transform property management businesses and their owners. We want to transform the industry, eliminate the BS, build awareness, change perception, expand the market, and help the best property management entrepreneurs win. I'm your host, property management growth expert, Jason Hull, the founder and CEO of DoorGrow. Now let's get into the show. So what are we chatting about today? So in continuing my series of doing this every Wednesday, we're going to be chatting today about BDMs. So what is a BDM and how to pay them? This is a real common question that I get is how do I pay a BDM? How should I pay them? so that I don't have to answer this question anymore, I'm gonna make a podcast episode about it. Here we go. All right, so first, what is a BDM? It's a business development manager. Why do we use that term instead of a salesperson in a property management business? Well, because salesperson or sales or anything connected to that usually gets convoluted or confused or mixed up with brokerage because a lot of you also do real estate and have a brokerage side of your business. And so, I think what's happened over time is the industry has just sort of adopted that a property management sort of salesperson is called a BDM. And we get that kind of from the Australians. They seem to call them BDMs um, or business development managers. And I think it's just so that we don't get them mixed up with the real estate salespeople or people that just do sales on the real estate side. Because anything related to sales tends to be considered real estate in the real estate industry even if it's property management. So it gets mixed up. All right. So, <clears throat> so BDM is really just a fancy word for somebody that's supposed to help you grow your business. You're supposed to come in, supposed to do sales. And there's a lot of mistakes I see people make. I have not heard good feedback on companies that help you find a BDM and place a BDM. And I don't think it's that those companies' fault. I don't think it's that that it's their fault. They probably do find people that are, you know, the right personality type. And maybe they're, a, you know, on a disc profile, they're a high D and a high I, and maybe they, you know, have a high economic score on a, on a values index on a disc, and maybe they love doing sales. Maybe they're good at sales, but I think what really ends up happening a lot of times is that the business owner is not good at sales, which is why they're hiring them, or the business owner is not good at onboarding a salesperson, which if you're not good at sales, you're not going to be good at onboarding a salesperson and giving them, them the right support that they need anyway. So, so let's touch on that first. So if you are not good at sales, my recommendation is you have to figure this out. This is one of the biggest key areas of the business. If you cannot generate revenue on demand, you cannot figure out how to bring in business, you need to figure that out. You don't have to do it forever, but otherwise you need to bring in a partner into the business that is already an expert, not just hiring some salesperson. You're going to try and convert into a BDM. You would have to go find somebody that has successfully added hundreds of doors as a BDM to a business and partner with them or bring them in to your business. Otherwise, just getting a salesperson and trying to turn them into a property management BDM is not going to be effective unless you know how to do it yourself. So my recommendation is put in the reps, take the time, become an expert at this and figure it out. And if you struggle with that, I'm really good at helping people improve that area and get really good at that. And we do that in our program. And it's awesome to see the transition of people going from 
well, I'm not really super great at sales or my close rate isn't really high to feel them saying what, what I typically hear is, I feel like I can get anybody on that I want. So now I'm picky and I don't want everybody. And that's a huge shift. I love seeing that shift in clients where they have the confidence that they know they can get pretty much anybody on if they want them because they're that good at sales. So <clears throat> I won't go into sales in detail on this podcast. We're not going to go in this episode into sales, but you need to make sure that you can properly support a BDM or a salesperson coming in. And what does that mean? That means you know what works. You have successfully proven that you can bring on business and you have scripts, you have language, you have recordings of calls, you have examples to give them. They can shadow you. They can ask, you have, you know, you know how to deal with all the different objections and challenges that tend to come up. If you have that, then it's maybe time to bring somebody else in. But there's another challenge. The other challenge is a lot of BDMs um, are expected to just get paid on commission, right? And so a lot of people say, how do you pay them? Well, if you're expecting them to just get paid on commission, the challenge with that is you're basically expecting them to starve for the first onboarding period of 30, 60, 90 days if they're just purely commission. And so you can have some sort of initial bonus structure that you give them that they're going to have to pay back maybe, but um, that puts them in the hole from the get-go and that can help them get over that sort of hump initially. But what I find is it doesn't make sense to pay people based on commission unless the commission payout is big. Like in real estate, it's pretty big for the amount of work that you do that becomes really big. You have a big payout. So it's worth it to do all that legwork and, and stuff like that. In property management, commissions are going to be smaller. And if you're expecting the BDM to not just close, but you're expecting them to do all the follow-up and the prospecting and the nurturing and all this work that doesn't get them paid on the front end, they only get paid when they close deals. So then you're expecting them to just do all of this work that they don't get paid for when they really want to spend their time doing what they really get paid for, right? So you need to have a couple of options. If you're going to do commission only, my recommendation is they're just closers. That means you have lead generation, follow-up, all that handled by somebody else. Or you bring them in and you pay them a base that's based on them doing all of that follow-up and prospecting and everything else based on that. And then there's a bonus or commission structure, maybe a little less than if they were commission only that's attached to the, um, you know, the winning of a contract or getting on a client. That is probably more ideal in most situations because then they're getting paid to do all of this work to build up the sales pipeline. And then they do have that reward they can get once they start getting business on and they're closing deals. So that's going to be generally, in my opinion, a far more effective structure is to have a base plus salary. Now, how do you onboard them? How do you start them out? My recommendation is that you take this, this BDM and you start them initially as a sales assistant. Just getting a sales assistant, if you're currently the business owner and you're closing the deals, could like double your close rate. It could double the amount of capacity that you have. So they're going to operate more like a setter an appointment setter, and then you're going to be the closer. Setter and closer allows you to also use a really effective strategy that one of my mentors calls the double barrel close, which can be really effective, in which they can prize the closer, make them more important in the mind of the prospect, and help you increase the close rate. You're really going to love what you, you know, what Jason has to say once you get on a call with him. He'll be able to answer all those other questions, you know, but first I, I need to make sure that you qualify to talk to Jason. That's what a setter can do for you. And it increases significantly your close rate and it increases your value in the mind of the prospect if they do that effectively and they can pre-frame and use some of these sales sort of tactics. Um, yeah, you know, future pace, pre-framing, stuff like that. Now, you start them as, a, as an appointment setter, and that means they're just learning the CRM. They're doing all the follow-up. They're helping you to schedule appointments. They're booking things on your Calendly or whatever scheduling thing you do. 
then you can just show up and close, close, close. So it's going to increase your close rate. This helps them learn how the sales process works. And they can then eventually start shadowing you, shadowing you and listening in on those sales calls that they've booked, being part of those. They can learn how you're doing it and they can get to the point where then they want to take those calls directly. And how do you motivate that? Well, if they're a driven salesperson and they like money, then the way that you do that is you're going to take your commission. And my recommendation is you figure out a, a flat fee commission structure. Flat fees generally are better than percentages for salespeople, in my opinion, because it gives them something concrete. They know each door I get, I'm going to get X number of dollars. Then you're going to take that commission structure and you're going to cut it in half maybe, or even a third, depending on how big that, that, that fee is going to be that you're going to pay them that commission. So if you're going to pay them a half commission, for example, you, you, let's say you do 50%, they get 50% if they set and they get the other 50% if they close it. So if they're just setting, they would start out just getting a half commission. If they set them up really nicely and you're able to close the deal, then they get it. And so this gets them this incentive. And once they start to taste that and they get these commissions, if they are the right personality type, they're driven, they like money, they're motivated by this, very quickly, they will be pushing to get that second half of the commission. What do I need to do to get that? What else do I have to learn? They're going to start asking questions. They're going to be very curious. You want them to be pulling to get more money from you and wanting to step into that then that shows that they're driven and they're the right personality type. If you find that you're trying to push them into it and move them along, hey, when are you going to be ready? It's been a few months now. Are you ready to do the calls on your own? You know, it, they're probably not the right personality type. And so maybe you didn't vet them correctly during the hiring process and looking at that disc profile, Myers Briggs, you know, some of the other things you might use to figure out if they're going to be a good fit naturally for this. So, um, so that's, that's some of the stuff we chatted about on today's call with clients that are in my program. Um, and so, you know, if you have questions about BDMs or things like that, you know, join our program, happy to chat with you more, um, or, um, you know, feel free to ask questions inside the door grow club. I'm sure lots of people have had experience in there at doorgrowclub.com about BDMs, but in general, Make sure they have the right personality type. Make sure you are onboarding them correctly. Now, I'll point out, I had a client chime in today that he was firing a couple of his BDMs. But they these were like maybe probably the first two or that he had hired. And usually if a BDM isn't working out, most of the time it's because they really weren't supported right. So if you do all the vetting right, then the real challenge usually is because they weren't supported right. They didn't have scripts. They didn't have proven things that worked. They didn't, you weren't able to showcase that you knew how to do it and teach them how to do, you know, close deals and be successful and deal with objections and everything else. So they didn't really have a chance. They didn't really have the right support. Plus the pay structure may not have been the way that I described and may not have incentivized them correctly. And so they weren't really onboarded or supported correctly. And so, and that's what I've seen a lot of times with companies that go and hire uh, a company to get them a BDM as the challenge. So figure out how to do it. Don't avoid it. it it's something that once you get comfortable with it feels great. It doesn't feel uncomfortable anymore because once you start winning deals and getting on business, sales becomes fun. And then you realize that sales is not anything pushy. It's not any, anything unethical, whatever sort of weird mindsets you have around sales. Sales really is just about helping people see their problems accurately and then helping them see how you can help them. That's it. It's not about getting other people to buy something they don't need or want. It's about getting them to buy the exact thing that they really need to help solve their problem. And that's you. You're the solution to that. So anyway, hopefully that's helpful. This will be a short episode today. And, um, you know, check out doorgrowclub.com if you want to join our Facebook free community. And uh, there's lots of great property managers in there that are willing to help out and ask, answer questions. And if you're wanting to take your business to the next level, start growing, start adding a lot of doors, having success, then, and you're ready to kind of be challenged and take things to the next level, 
then reach out to us and we will give you access to a free training, my seven frameworks um, on how you can grow your property management business and the things that are holding you back, why most companies suck in the industry so that you are not the next sucky company and you can be great too. So hopefully this was helpful and until next time to our mutual growth, everyone. Bye everybody.